Do you want to start playing Fortnite but don't know where to begin? Then this is the video for you. Today we're going to teach you everything you need to know to hit the ground running so you can start getting those victory royales even if this is your first time playing. There's plenty to look at from creative hotspots to in-game knowledge, so let's get started. If you're looking to create content or simply explore the island before you drop into a match of Battle Royale, then check out Battle Labs. This mode gives you free range over the whole area and you can check it out at your own leisure. This makes it a good place to try out the new weapons and items when you're not trying to fend off opponents mid-game. You can use this to find potential glitches and even some neat exploits. Battle Labs is also a good place to try scrimmaging against other players in a more accurate setting. Chests also have a 100% spawn rate which can help you figure out which areas have the highest potential for loot. Do you want to try some cool new game modes? How about use weapons and items that you missed from previous seasons? On creative, you can do pretty much that with team deathmatches, 1v1s, and late game arenas that utilize older items. You also have plenty of four fun game modes such as party games, role playing scenarios, and even some seasonal experiences. There are so many distinctive modes to try out. If you do feel like grinding, then creative will teach you how to master your mechanics. Building and editing can seem like the most intimidating gameplay mechanic to learn, but a lot of it is just muscle memory. Creative offers you a chance to learn how to build, test out new keybinds, and experiment with your edits without having to collect resources during a match of Battle Royale. It's a lot quicker and you can do this as much as you need to get the hang of the mechanics. If you want to train like the pros, then click on the link below and visit ProGuides.com. Here you will learn to use your new skills effectively, uncover hidden details about the map, and use the same strategies that the pros use to win tournaments. Come try our coaching and we guarantee that you will improve no matter what skill level you're coming in with. Now for the main game mode on Fortnite, nope, not save the world, we're talking about Battle Royale. This is where you drop down from the iconic battle bus and face off against 99 other players who are all fighting for that victory crown. You'll need to master your weaponry, be the first to reach new areas, and perfect the art of survival if you want to reach the top. Just be sure to watch that storm. Generally, Battle Royale consists of a few separate stages. Your early game, mid game, and late games, which are sometimes referred to as end games or combined into one turn depending on who's speaking. Early games include choosing a landing spot, looting, and eliminating any players who didn't quite prep in time. Mid game revolves around moving across the map as you avoid the storm. This is the stage where you should focus on getting rid of green and blue weaponry. Try to get this to purple or above. You should also make sure you stock up on building resources, health items, and eliminations if you bump into any players. Late games and end games will vary. The storm will decrease in size enough for you to see every boundary. It will start to feel more like a traditional free for all. However, in more advanced game modes such as Arena, you will not be dealing with flat space but rather builds that reach the sky. It will be your job to maintain height as the storm continues to close and starts moving. If you stockpiled enough resources or mats, then this will help you keep moving. Also be sure to keep eliminating players so you can take their resources. This is what is known as a refresh. This next section will help you master your weapons and items. Weapons come in various shapes and sizes. Some of them like snipers are great for long distance fighting. Others like the shotguns are generally close range. Then you have everything in between such as ARs and submachine guns. These will frequently change as the season progresses so you'll need to adapt to whatever is currently available in the loot pool. Even a small change in stats can have a big impact on which weapons will be the most useful. In general, Take this into consideration. Most of the time, SMGs will be great for tearing down builds, while shotguns will be used for ripping a chunk of health away from your opponent up close and fast. However, no items ever have a singular purpose and must be used in combination with other mechanics to truly get the most out of your inventory. Having good shotgun aim and combining it with your edit skills is a great way to open up windows and land a hit on your opponent during a box fight. Meanwhile, using your pickaxe to weaken a wall before punching through with your SMG will let you have enough ammo in your weapon to deal serious damage once it goes down. Sometimes weapons will break the standards and have similar abilities to others. An AR like the Evo Chrome AR can completely eat through walls despite not being an SMG. And the Cobra DMR is a faster rate of fire for long range combat with the trade off being it can't one hit kill players. The best advice to give a brand new player is to never fall into the habit of sticking to one weapon. You need to develop a habit of switching out weapons mid fight depending on the situation. The Chrome AR is a fantastic weapon but if you only use this 
this, then you're not going to be able to utilize other weapons. Same goes for the shotgun. You may love the feel of downing your player in one hit, but that just leaves you vulnerable from anything out of your reach. Items are also quite similar to weapons. You also want healing items in your inventory no matter what. Some items like the first aid kit can heal you all the way to 100%, but take some time to use and lock you down. Meanwhile, an item like the med mist will heal you much slower, but you can control how much you heal while still giving you plenty of mobility. Shields work the same too. It's quicker to pop two minis than going for double pops. Meanwhile, in competitive play, floppers and chug splashes can be used to instantly recover a large portion of your health or shields. Chug splash, for instance, also has other benefits such as healing both health or shields, with the added bonus of also healing any teammates near you. So now, where are we dropping, boys? Fortnite has plenty of environments from snow, forests, beaches, and deserts. On the map, you will find plenty of named POIs or points of interest which are usually every player's default choice. However, if you want to go from noob to probe, you are going to want to memorize some of the smaller unnamed spots on the map. These will usually be emptier and you can collect loot and fill up your shields before running into combat. Some spots such as the gas stations might be far away enough from the main POI that you can loot relatively peacefully while still keeping you close to the action, while others are almost completely isolated. Keep in mind that there are other factors when choosing a landing spot. How many chests usually spawn will determine if you have enough items and weapons to fight enemies, while vehicles that spawn nearby can let you leave the area quicker once you're done preparing. If you want to double your elimination count, get the best loot, and travel stealthily through the map, then you need to learn the best ways to rotate. So what exactly is rotation? This is game speak for moving from one area to another. Sometimes rotation refers to moving from Chonker Speedway to Tilted Towers. Other times, rotation simply simply means moving a short distance away from one spot to another for a better vantage point or to gain high ground. Cars are the most common rotation method you will find on the Fortnite island and for the most part, these will be available to you every season. Meanwhile, you have other rotational items such as shockwave grenades which will launch you in the direction of your choice, or launch pads which will allow you to pull out your glider and redeploy in a slower but more controlled manner. Epic will sometimes also throw in other items from time to time like the rift to go, grappling glove, or the chrome which are new options for you to experiment with but are more likely to be bolted for the next season or simply not included in the current one. Some environments will also allow you to redeploy or move around faster without the use of items such as the hot air balloons in season 4 paradise or the slipstreams near the rave cave. Some spaces such as the synapse station have naturally occurring rifts which can be used after looting to get back in the air. Every method has its advantages and disadvantages. Just look at the wolves and boars. You will be a bit more vulnerable than riding a car but you can use weapons. It's all about the trade-off. Just keep in mind that some methods of moving around are much more noticeable which can attract enemy players in your direction. Sometimes, if you want to be covert, running or sliding down a hill can be much safer. If you want an advantage, then turn on your audio-visual settings. It will pick up enemy movement, combat, and interactions which can give you a great heads up. So let's go a little more in-depth to building and editing. There are four basic shapes. Walls, ramps, cones, and floors. However, each one has a whole set of possible edits which when used properly can allow you to retake the high ground, open up peaks, or even trap your opponents. Once again, everything revolves around combining your tactics. Four walls and a ceiling can create a good box to protect yourself from enemy fire. However, adding a cone to the floor of your box can make it more versatile. Now, you can edit that cone to create cover or create a slope you can use to move further up if you want to change your angle. Wood is the most common resource used in builds and most of the time you will see other players using it. However, brick and steel are still valid options. However, due to their scarcity, you want to be able to use them at the right time. Every rookie makes this mistake. They get a hold of some brick and assume that because it has higher health, they should automatically start using that for their box. However, the better material usually takes longer to set up, so it's important to figure out how dire your situation is. If you have an opponent firing at you, then using wood will provide quick cover. Meanwhile, if you have a little extra time, you can use brick to make things a bit harder for them. However, keep in mind that the better the cover is, the less your opponent will be able to see inside your box. A wood wall will still give you a view of your opponent even if you don't smack it with your pickaxe. Meanwhile, a steel wall will almost completely cover what's going on inside a box once it's built. 
Your opponent could be waiting for you to make a move, or perhaps they've already exited the box and are trying to get behind you. You won't know until you've damaged it enough to take a look inside. This same logic applies if you're inside the box. You are safer inside, but you might lose track of your opponent's movement. Builds aren't just used for defensive purposes. To fully master Fortnite, you need to incorporate builds and edits into your fighting. This will allow you to become a much bigger threat to everyone on the island. Rather than creating a box to keep yourself safe, use boxes to lock your opponents down. Enemies can't edit any build they don't own, so a wall you place down can only be edited to benefit you. If they want to bring down a wall, they're gonna need to break yours first and then replace it with their own. This type of scenario is known as peace control, where two or more players fight for control of strategic build placement. If you manage to box up an opponent, then you control what you can open and close. You could create a window and fire shots inside, or you could make a side edit and crouch. Some players such as Clicks use a technique of resetting their build to misdirect players. They might go in to create an edit to give their opponent the illusion that they will be firing from that direction. However, when the opponent faces in that direction to fire, the build is quickly reset allowing the wall to absorb the shot while a new edit is made in the complete opposite side. This becomes the perfect distraction for landing your own shot with minimal chances of getting clapped yourself. Learn to use your edits in creative ways to maximize your defenses and offenses. You will need them once you start experiencing end games. If you want more eliminations, then you need to practice your aim. Without it, you'll be lucky if you even get that victory royale. Aim is all about sensitivity. You want it high enough that you can do a full 360 search around you in case an opponent decides to catch you from behind. Meanwhile, you don't want it so crazy that you're consistently slipping past every enemy. It's also important that you learn crosshair placement so you always have your enemy in sight and you can snap in their direction once you see an opening. Once again, aiming is all about muscle memory, so keep practicing against moving targets and courses that combine editing and aiming. The longer you keep your weapon on the target while firing, the more damage you will do per second. Meanwhile, being able to land that first shot can give you an immediate advantage during a fight. Now that you've learned the basics, it's time to try the arena challenge. This is where you will become a true pro. Every season, arena will reset and players will need to grind for hype points. You can earn them from eliminations, placements, and victories. Racking up points might seem easy at first if you've trained. However, as you rise the ranks, you will be spending points to pay for the bus fare. Now you will have to figure out how many points you will need per game to break even, and maybe even move up a little. Sometimes dying too early will result in a total loss of points. Your goal is to reach Champions League, which will open up the doors to more exclusive tournaments, so make sure to put everything you've learned together for the best chances at victory. That wraps things up for today. Did you enjoy today's video? Leave a like and ring that bell for more tips, tricks, and more. Remember, practice makes perfect, and with this you'll know where to start. Once again, this is Galvanize, and we'll see you next time.